What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back out again with another video. So we're gonna check out the best match from every year of WWE Raw. And this should be a good one. Uh, shout out to everyone that was a part of the uh, the Raw is 30 live stream, the 30 year uh, 30 year anniversary of Monday Night Raw. We did the live stream last night. Not gonna lie to you, that uh, Monday Night Raw was pretty good. I enjoyed myself. I see a lot of you guys did as well. That first hour was. 10 out of 10 fantastic i wish monday night raw was more like that on a consistent basis uh it'll definitely be more enjoyable so we gotta check out some of the best matches from each year of monday night raw and i will say that tag team match um with uh the usos versus the judgment day and then sammy Zayn being uh um involved in the match um because i believe jimmy ended up kayfabe getting injured last night that tag team match was definitely a great match on the show so we're gonna see some of these other legendary matches on monday night raw from over the years man and let's get right into this one bro Monday Night Raw is old. 30 years. I can't imagine anyone ever being that old. It could never happen to me. As the show... Yeah, I'm older than Monday Night Raw. That's that's the crazy thing. <laughs> I'm older than the damn show. ...prepares to celebrate its 30th birthday and not its 30th anniversary because I guess not knowing how anniversaries work is a WWE thing regardless of the regime. We can now take a moment to reflect on the times that the show wasn't a steaming pile. It's happened less often than you think. All right, let's quit the pitter-patter and let's get at her. I'm Tempest hailing from Parts Fun Known and this is the best match from every year of WWE Raw. But before we get on with our list, make sure, of course, man, just the volume subscribe. for you guys. Enable notifications to always on so you never miss a fun list just like it. And make sure that you check out the plethora of Royal Rumble content that we've had coming your way this month. Watch Survival Series. It's also great and Royal Rumble themed. And you love the Royal Rumble. Don't lie to me. I know you do. 1993, Shawn Michaels versus Marty Jannetty, episode 26, July 19th. Damn, Remember when 26. Marty Jannetty jumped through the barbershop window to escape Shawn Michaels? Well, a year and a half later, Jannetty finally pulled pulled himself out of Brutus Beefcake's storefront to challenge HBK for the Intercontinental Championship on Raw. In the doldrums of the New Generation era, these two had a match that both encapsulated why they were one of the most popular tag teams of their day and why their style would be representative of the future of Raw. It's a shame Sean had to drop the title here. Everyone will always remember that Marty Jannetty's better than him. 1994, Bret <laughs> Hart versus 123 Kid, episode 69, July 4th. Look at this little head tilt. This thing, this is my favorite part of the match. Bret Hart defends the WWE championship against the 123 kid and kid takes him over and through superb physical storytelling brett realizes that this match is going to be a lot more than he had prepared for brett has always been a master of the ring and when he got to wrestle someone who could keep up with him it made for the highlights of mid 90s wwe mm -hmm. 1995 i believe brett that's Hart uh 123 kid that was uh goes by x Pac now let me let me double check i, I believe that was him hold on I'm, I'm doing a double check night right now uh one two three the, the fact that that was his name one two three yeah no i, I could have sworn yeah that was uh um x Pac or whatnot but at that time he went by one two three kid which is such a cringe name Akushi, episode 121, July 24th. Here he is again, that Bret Hart, having good matches in 1995. <laughs> what a god. 1995 is maybe the worst calendar year in WWE history, and that extended to their flagship program. Bret faced Hakushi while Jerry Lawler berated him and our ears on commentary, and it is a shame Hakushi didn't get more of a run in WWE considering how well he worked with a top star like Bret. Bret fights off Hakushi's manager and wins with the sharpshooter. It's nothing memorable, but then again, neither is 1995. 1996, Damn. Shawn Michaels versus 123 oh, Kid, wow. episode 149, <laughs> March 4th. HB Shizzle may not have liked many people in the 90s, but he sure liked his friends. The 123 Kid was one of those friends, and as such, the match they had on Raw in March of 1996 felt like two friends working super hard for one another. Sean was just weeks out from his coronation at WrestleMania 12, and this was a great showcase match with crisp action and Sean fighting off the interference of Ted DiBiase. Again, it isn't mind-blowing by today's standards, but considering what else was on Raw at the time, yeah, this is pretty great. 1997, Sean might that's cool seeing Xbox really Xbox being involved in these high profile matches and putting on pretty good showings. That's always dope to see. Steve Austin versus Owen Hart and British Bulldog, episode 211, May 26th. When WWE has just put their best wrestlers in the ring and let them wrestle, good things have happened. Doesn't matter which time we were traveling around the sun, WWE's best have been pretty great. It also doesn't matter when it is, WWE f loves themselves a can you coexist, don't they? Mm -hmm. It's in the episode description for f sake. Austin <laughs> didn't coexist and had a 
in great match doing it. 1998, Steve Austin versus Kane, episode 266, June 29th. 1998 wasn't a great year for match quality for WWE on Monday nights, but that wasn't what made Raw must see. It was Steve Austin yep. f***ing up, mother one night after being screwed that's literally what made monday night raw what it was stone cold steve austin causing chaos <laughs> screwed out of his wwe championship at king of the ring austin just said he wasn't going to stand for it winning his title back in the quickest fashion possible it isn't the technical masterclass that would become commonplace on raw 20 years later but that pop when austin wins the title back is attitude era frenzy mm -hmm. to a t 1999 the rock versus mankind episode 299 february 15th this is a real hot potato era for the wwe championship despite this only being the 46th day of 1999 this was already the fourth title change of the year while that might be completely mad to some it wasn't for the people in the crowd that night the rock and mankind have a very good ladder match much more in line with the ladder matches of the time pre hardy's dudley's and edge and christian with less giant spots and more wrestling with john mm -hmm. the dwayne roxon earning his way to wrestlemania to face steve austin 2000 triple h x-pac and the radicals versus the rock mick foley and too cool episode 350 february 7th the w WWF midcard had finally arrived. The turning of the tide and the quality of Monday Night Raw as an overall program came mm -hmm. when they finally sorted out their goddamn roster. When you take a roster that already had Mick Foley, The Rock, Undertaker, Kane, and Triple H at the top, and then start to add folks like The Radicals, that's yep. how you get a stacked roster. Sure enough, you had this massive collection of stars who would be incapable of having a bad match. The star power alone would have carried this match, but thankfully, they did a good wrestle too, didn't they? And it's always good to have a strong midcard sometimes we you know tend to forget that the mid card helps the overall show of course you're gonna have your top guys that you know kind of carry the show in the sense of star power and people want to see them but if you have a good mid card division between those main event segments and spots and storylines you can have something that's like okay these guys you know i'm interested in what these guys are doing i'm interested in uh and what story they're trying to tell, you know, and I would, I would put, obviously I would put the tag team division as a mid card, uh, part of the mid card only because, you know, they're not main eventers. They're, they're in the middle of the, of the show. A lot of times good tag team matches are at the beginning of the show in the middle of the show. So I would consider them part of mid card, like being in that, in that realm. So if you have a good tag team, good mid card, you can have a, a pretty good wrestling roster because now everything doesn't have to depend on the top guys. You know, you can actually get some good quality matches from the middle, of, uh, from the from the guys that are not there at the top of the card, you know? So it's always good to have that. 2001, Triple H and Steve Austin versus Chris Jericho and Chris Benoit, <laughs> episode four. And yes, my voice is kind of gone because of uh, Monday Night Raw. <laughs> I was going crazy last night on stream. <laughs> 17, May 21st. For a long time, I only knew this as the one where Triple H tore his quad, my favorite episode of Friends. But no, this might be the <laughs> single greatest match in Raw history. Triple H still in his best run, Steve Austin still being one of the best workers of his generation, and then two incredible underdog workers that the crowd badly wanted to see win. This might be the best tag match in WWE history and this is slightly unrelated but Jericho and Benoit wrestled TLC3 maybe the best match in Smackdown history the next night in crazy 2002 TLC4 episode 489 October 7th if TLC3 is the forgotten TLC match, I don't even know what that makes TLC4. The weird TLC match where the original three teams all got spliced up with Bubba Ray Dudley swapping Devon out for Spike, Christian exchanged his edge for a Chris Jericho, and Jeff Hardy got a new brother in Rob Van Dam. All mm -hmm. the while, Kane was tanking the match solo. It is a car crash on free TV. I pray yep. for the men involved, but thank them very much for having such a great match. Uh -huh. 2003, Triple H versus Shawn Michaels, episode 553, December 29th. Adam really needs to have a chat with his dad about ruining people's fun. He did it a lot in WCW, but hadn't gotten his fill apparently because he decided that this match for the World Heavyweight Championship had to abide by the rules. <laughs> Triple H and Shawn Michaels have probably their best straight singles match, and just as the match reaches its conclusion, with Shawn appearing to have won the big gold belt I once more, this. Eric the Bish alerts us all that Shawn's shoulders were down to no fun, no winner. Yeah, I remember that. That was such a good good moment bro such a good turn of events Shawn michaels triple h feud around this time was just fucking it was just legendary so great but a great match 2004 Shawn michaels versus chris benoit episode 571 may 3rd 2003 was a bad 
freshman year for Raw. 2004, however, saw a massive influx of talent, capable of putting on fantastic matches with extreme regularity, just like this one. Benoit and Michaels were maybe the best workers in WWE at the time, and the two of them wrestling a half-hour classic for the big uh -huh. gold belt is a prime example of why Raw was actually so good in 2004 this finish though gonna yeah. be all about triple h yeah <laughs> sean michaels versus shelton benjamin episode six this is a good one too the infamous super kick out of nowhere with sheldon benjamin jumping from the top row oh my god that was just insane Woo, that was a good match. 23, May 2nd. Best super kick of all time. Three years in a row, HB Shizzle having the best Raw match of the year. The final leg of this trilogy stands as one of the best matches in Raw history and a prime example of why Shelton Benjamin should have been given so much more of a chance mm -hmm. in WWE. I could talk about this match until this Raw match becomes two good. hours, but all I want to talk about is this Kick. Kicks oh my god, bro. Of this is such a good match. Edge versus Ric Flair, episode 660, January 16th. It took nearly six years for WWE to put on their first TLC singles match. And when fans thought about all the great candidates to have that first singles TLC match, I don't think any of them would have considered Ric Flair as one of the men involved. Uh -huh. But that does not mean the match wasn't great. Edge and Flair didn't do a lot of high flying, but they put on a smartly worked match that had the crowd in a frenzy by the yep. time Edge retrieved his belt. Also, look at Charlotte, 2006. Seven, John Cena versus Shawn Michaels, episode 720. Wait, that was Charlotte. Hold on. That's crazy. It had the crowd in a frenzy by the time Edge retrieved his belt. Also, look. Wow. That. Charlotte, 2000. Wait, that ain't. Wait, what? That's crazy. She that she was there for that. That's that's fucking dope. That's fucking dope. She, when you look at her on this picture, she looked completely different obviously but that that's pretty cool that she was there for that 2007 john cena versus Shawn michaels episode 726 april 23rd is there a more legendary raw match just a match that has become part of the this match i'm glad this was on there this had to be on there bro i believe they was in the uk one of the best matches on monday night raw bro ridiculous this this match was just pay-per-view quality good bro insane lore of the show and respected by basically everyone just weeks after their epic match in the main event of wrestlemania john cena and Shawn michaels put on one of the longest matches in raw history going yep. 56 minutes and tearing the house down right here in london england you don't see matches like this on Raw then or now and as a result this is an achievement of a performance when you consider the ability needed to not only wrestle for an hour but be this entertaining for an hour. That was great. Jeff Hardy versus Umaga, episode seven. This was good too. This was good the too. Best whisper in the wind of all. Oh my God, this was good. Rest in peace, Umaga. Oh, this was good, bro. This was so good, bro. Oh, this was. Yeah. This is what a cage match should be. This was fantastic. Time. Jeff Hardy and Umaga had really great chemistry with one another, and that was on full display here when they were locked in a steel cage in the main event of Raw Roulette 2008. This is a really fun cage match, with Hardy trying to fight off his monstrous opponent while dealing with Randy Orton's uh -huh. continued interference from the outside before getting the win with the best whisper, whisper in, in the, the wind, wind of all time. <laughs> 2009, John Cena versus Shawn Michaels, episode 816, January 12th. During his second run with WWE, Shawn Michaels had the best Raw match of the year five separate times. Mm. They don't call him the best for nothing. Cena and HBK rekindled their 2007 yep. rivalry just in time for Shawn's boss, JBL, to have a terrible match with John Cena at the Royal Rumble. And if that sounds stupid, that's because it was. This match <laughs> was an underrated gem, with yeah, Shawn getting the win because it is written in stone that Shawn beats Cena every time unless the title is on the line. Uh -huh. 2010, Randy Orton versus Edge versus Chris Jericho, episode 895, July 9th. Don't ask me why I vividly remember this episode of Raw from 2010, but it was a phenomenal show. The episode where Cena forms Team WWE to take on the Nexus oh. starts with this all-star triple threat match. Orton, Edge, and Jericho all battle to face Sheamus for the WWE Championship, and here Edge and Jericho's 2010 rivalry keeps getting in the way of either man getting the win, with Orton coming away with it at the height of his popularity. 2011, The Miz versus John Morrison, episode 919, January 3rd. The only good title defense of The Miz's WWE Championship <laughs> reign on the first Raw 2011, Miz the Miz Mizanin put his belt on the line against the parkour prince and former tag team partner, John Morrison. Too many WWE Falls Count Anywhere matches still end in the ring and I can't stand it. So, any Falls Count Anywhere match that ends literally anywhere else gets uh -huh. a gold star from me, like this one. 
2012. Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan, episode 1013, October 22nd. It is absolutely incredible to see how much of a difference in star power there is between Mr. Money in the Bank, supposedly with a bright future Dolph Ziggler, and yeah. it should have been me, Dolph Ziggler. Here he takes on former World Heavyweight Champion Daniel Bryan and is presented as being completely on his level. They are two talented wrestlers doing a talented wrestle in front of fans that haven't been beaten down by the treatment of both men yet. Bryan is in his no phase. He and Kane are yeah. very entertaining. 2013, CM Punk versus John Cena, episode 1030. February 18th. What would the timeline look like if this match simply had a different result? CM Punk and John Cena may have been each other's greatest opponents, and on February 18th, 2013, they had their last match together. That's As crazy. Punk won, or they'd done a schmoz and done a triple threat at Mania, giving Punk that Mania main event he wanted so badly. Who knows how we look back at the past decade of Punk history? Also, Fact. there's a pile driver in this match, and that's just neat. 2014, The Wyatts versus The Shield, episode oh, 1084, yeah. March 3rd. The sequel to the two factions, excellent match at Elimination this Chamber. Nice. This time the Wyatts beat the Shield not simply because they overwhelmed them, separating each Shield member from the pack and beating them at their own numbers game, but because this is where Seth Rollins had enough of his team's bickering. Seth walks out to end a fantastic trios match, furthering the tension within the Shield and foreshadowing the group's real split months later. Uh -huh. 2015, that John Cena versus one. Cesaro, episode 1154, July 6th. To be perfectly honest, there are about a dozen matches that could have made excellent entries for 2015. Seth Rollins versus Neville, Roman Reigns versus Cesaro. But when you think of Raw in 2015, you think of John Cena's U.S. Open Challenge. U.S. Open Challenge by John, bro, was so fuck. It was, it was good. He was putting on some great matches. This was good. This was cool to see because the United States Championship actually felt like something important. For the first time in a long time, it felt like a big deal. And now, in my opinion, it, it has definitely gain his prestige by default because raw doesn't really have a champion like roman reigns doesn't really be on raw like that or defending the title so the top title on monday night raw is the united states championship so they have no other choice but to make it feel important but at this time this was u.s open challenge bro man that shit was great Hell, there are 10 candidates just from that reign alone. However, on July 6th, Cena took on Cesaro in a pay-per-view main event caliber match, going mm -hmm. a half hour in the main event of the show and tearing the house down like we had never seen in 2015 before. 2016, Charlotte versus Sasha Banks, episode 1227, November 28th. For as jank as Sasha Banks and Charlotte's pay-per-view matches were in 2016, every time they wrestled on Raw, they killed it. Any uh -huh. of the three times Sasha won the title could have made it on here, but the Falls Count Anywhere match the two had on november 28th is the best of the bunch and hey look at this finish not in the ring a big old gold star from dear old tempest look at this bank statement jesus oh, yeah, that, wet that bank statement between the rails was brutal and i loved it that's beautiful 2017 bailey versus charlotte episode 1238 february 13th 2017 was a very strange time. WWE seemed bound and determined to take the slam dunk moment of Bayley's first main roster title win and do every single possible thing wrong with it. Win uh -huh. at WrestleMania? Nah. Break Charlotte's pay-per-view undefeated streak in a satisfying way? Nah. nah. How did Bayley admit that she didn't deserve to be champion but was going to be champion anyway? Yup. How did you land on that? The match itself is the only bit they got right in this equation uh -huh. as Bayley and Charlotte brought that NXT level of quality to the main roster. 2018. Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor, episode 1301, April 30th. Seth Rollins and Finn Balor had a pair of excellent matches in early 2018, but this one was for the Intercontinental Championship, raising that title's value with one. another great title defense, and this match was given the distinction of being the main event of the show. This was the best Seth was as a babyface, and if yep. they had simply allowed him the chance to have a long run as IC champion with title... I think, yep, this is right around the time he was a babyface, he was an IC champ, they should have ran with that. They should have ran with that. Because he was pretty much, he was carrying Monday Night Raw on his back. It was Monday Night Raw. -less. He was carrying it on his back with the IC Championship. It was fucking great. Title defenses like this, he'd have been the top babyface WWE always wanted him to be. Yeah. 2019, The Revival versus Chad Gable and Bobby Roode, episode 1342, February 11th. The reports from the house shows at the time were that the Gable and Rude versus Revival matches were consistently fantastic and consistently tore the house down. Watching this match, I can fully believe it. However, those matches probably got a better live reaction than this one got. Two awesome teams having the TV match of the year in front of absolute silence, then a this is awesome chant, then back to silence. Might as well have had no fans at all. Oh. Yeah, and that's the thing about, 
And they're obviously, arguably, the bat, one of the best tag teams in the world. But the problem is, is the fact that shoddy booking with them and the casual fan just does not care as much. Well, and it also depends on where, you know, this takes place. Like, them having a match on Dynamite, AEW, instant crowd reaction. Doesn't matter what they do. Crowd's going to go crazy. Having a match in a random town on Monday Night Raw, WWE, no. If it's not a wrestling city, there's a good chance the crowd may come alive here and there, and then they'll just be sitting there quiet. That's just... That's just the nature of wrestling in WWE. But for AEW, oh, nah. Anywhere they go, any city, they will always get a reaction. Oh, wait, no, 2020. Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre, episode 1434, November 16th. Ah, the bad times. This yeah. is the best of a cursed bunch. Drew McIntyre wins the WWE title back. That's happy fun time, but it can never be watched again because they're wrestling in front of your dad trying to figure out how to make his browser full screen Facts. i can't talk about pandemic wrestling anymore we move 2021 yeah. seth rollins versus Rey mysterio versus finn balor versus kevin owens episode 1483 october 25th it is tricky to have an ultra memorable ladder match these days however putting four of your best wrestlers in the match with high stakes is a good place to uh -huh. start on the ever important season premiere of raw these dudes took bumps no one should be taking on free tv nah, that's hey you tell paper kevin not to swan on his way pay-per-view quality <laughs> Matches, this one will be on it. 2022, RK Bro versus Alpha Academy versus Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins, episode 1502, March 7th. Here's a thought that doesn't often creep into my head. I miss Randy Orton. Orton spent so much time doing nonsense with The Fiend that when he finally got to just wrestle some matches, he was great. Everyone mm -hmm. was desperately trying to find a match for WrestleMania. So in a sense, this match had added stakes, even though that's a weird way to promote your wrestlers for your big show. But these dudes are all great, and we get another all-time great RKO. Yeah, that was a beautiful beauty. spot. In 2023, Austin Theory versus Seth Rollins, episode 1545, January 2nd. Slim Pickens here. Not that this match wasn't good. We've just got three Raws to work with in 2023 yeah. so far. Seth Rollins has been the best in-ring performer on Raw for the past several Without years, a doubt. and it doesn't appear that that is going to change in 2023. Rollins tried to get his U.S. title back on the first Raw of the year, and while he didn't manage it, he did manage to have the best match of the whole year. The whole year. No need to continue. Cancel Raw there. <laughs> Happy birthday. And that's our what? list. Make sure, of course, that you subscribe to Parts <laughs> nah, of the that, that was a good match so far of the year. So, so far... He, he, he's he's on track you know we will see what happened with the future raws coming up uh the one raw match i can think of that i i wish probably was on this list and maybe y'all feel differently about it is the the match to find out who was going to be the new uh universal champion and uh at the time because finn balor had to relinquish it because he got injured and that bro the match was fun you didn't know how it was going to play out thought it was going to be Roman Reigns being the guy, but they pulled a mega swerve. Triple H coming out there, screwing over Roman Reigns, then screwing over Seth Rollins for Kevin Owens uh, to get the to get the win, bro. Oh, that was such a good moment. That that was a very fun match in my opinion, even before the screwy finish. So, but comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite Monday Night Raw match of all time. Let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel road to 150k and i am still you know the speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all on the next one yes my voice is, is gone hopefully it comes back for uh the royal rumble <laughs>